Five years ago, I bought a Cessna 182, and my life has never been the same. And my favorite part of this story is something that comes full circle for me in a really meaningful way. But this isn't just a story about me. Really, this is a story about you also, because I want to help give you the opportunity to go fly a real airplane and experience some of the things that I've experienced. So stick around until the end of the video, because I'm going to tell you about a really cool initiative that I just started that could help get you in the air. I've always known that I wanted to become a pilot and hopefully own an airplane one day. From an early age, I remember walking along the fences of Addison Airport with my dad here in Texas. And I remember vividly, it was a cold front, there's ice on the ground everywhere, nobody's flying, nobody's doing anything in Texas anytime it gets cold. But I remember looking at all the 172s lined up there, just quietly sleeping and, and riding out the storm. And I remember thinking, what would it be like to be on the other side of this fence? What would it be like to have a key to one of those airplanes just to go sit in the cockpit and, and, and even just experience what that feels like? What does it smell like? What is it like to uh, be someone that gets to do that? And so I was deeply thankful when a few years later I got to start actually taking flight lessons at Addison Airport. And, and I never took that for granted. I was always deeply grateful of any time I got to walk through the fence with a key to an airplane. I didn't own the airplane, but I had a key to it and I got to go sit in and I got to pre-flight it and I actually got to fly it. And, and so that was deeply rewarding for me. And so I had good momentum uh, during you know high school learning to fly and I soloed on my 16th birthday, uh, which fell on a Sunday. So I legally flew by myself before I legally drove by myself, got my driver's license the next day, got my license shortly after I was 17, had a lot of good momentum, loved being a pilot, but then I stopped flying got to college and finances got in the way. It was expensive. I couldn't couldn't rent or own an airplane during that time of life. And so I'd, I'd fly my dad's Super Cub every now and then. He had a Super Cub at that point, um, but I really wasn't flying very much. And, and that always deep, deeply saddened me because something, and maybe you can relate to this, something that brings me so much joy that I'm so deeply interested in. I love aviation, I love airplanes. And I could talk about it, I could reminisce about old memories and things, but I wasn't actually doing it. And that, that always really bothered me, but I didn't feel like there's anything I could do about it because I just didn't have the money to go fly. So fast forward a few years and I had a job, I was back in Dallas and I was working really hard. I feel like I was, I was make, making good money and, and um, just working a lot. And I was trying to save all I could for aviation because I determined that, okay, I'm going to stop talking about the days that I was a pilot and I want to get back in the air. So I really kind of recommitted myself to, to taking lessons again to get current back in the airplane. And I got my instrument rating. I got it at Addison Airport. So I'd work all day and I actually worked pretty near the airport. And so I got my instrument rating and uh, and then started renting airplanes, started renting 172s at Addison and, and had a lot of fun with that, but, but started to realize um, the downsides of renting and, and just the availability. And I couldn't be as spontaneous as I wanted to be, or even if you wanted to be um, you, you know, plan ahead in a really big way for a trip. It was hard to do that in a renting environment. And so some things just started leading towards, uh, towards buying. And I, I cover that in other videos. I'll put it down in the description, kind of the rent versus buy scenario for me. But ultimately I decided, okay, you know what? I want to buy an airplane. And I, I did a lot of planning and trying to make sure that I wasn't going to go, uh, you know, financially upside down in doing so. That was really, really important to me. But I decided that it was, uh, it was time to buy an airplane. But there was a, one really, really big problem. And that was that I couldn't find hangar space anywhere. Hangar space in DFW, even five years ago, much less now, was really, really difficult. I was calling around, I was trying to get on wait lists, and I thought, well, I could buy an airplane, but where's it gonna go? I don't have anywhere to put it. And um, something really good happened. My, my dad has always been um, just a huge uh, support, my, both my parents, but my dad has always been a very big supporter uh, of aviation for me. And so they live down in the hill country and he found a hangar in the hill country. And he said, Charlie, I know you don't live here, but you come and visit a lot. Uh, so if you want to buy an airplane, I will help you make that happen. I, I, I got you this hangar. And so he rented a, a kind of temporary hangar for me. So then I thought, well, shoot, I've got a hangar. I got to go put something in that hangar. And so it felt like it kind of happened quick, but there was a lot of uh, planning in the process. So started to think about what kind of airplane I wanted. And, and I had some experience in 172s. I had some 182 time because my dad had a 182 and I was flying it a little bit. I had some Super Cub time and things. Uh, and so I was thinking about the different airplanes. And, and one of my aviation mentors, Bob, if you're watching this, thanks, Bob. You know, he called me and said, hey, Charlie, I've been thinking a lot about this. And if 
you are going to buy one airplane. If this is your first or last airplane you ever buy, I really, really think you should get the 182. Don't get the 172. Just get the 182, and, and you'll you'll be able to do anything in it, really, for the rest of your flying career. And I thought a lot about that, and I agreed with him. And so uh, 182 is going to be the airplane, and I came up with the different parameters of things that I was looking for in terms of how it was outfitted and, you know, uh, you know avionics and things. And so I came up with a wish list, and uh, Bob was actually also my broker, and, and he's an A&P, so he was a great guy. To, to be kind of representing me in this process and helping me. So I hired him to help me and I knew what kind of 182 that I wanted, but what I didn't expect was how quickly things were about to happen. So I had a hangar and I knew I was shopping for a 182 and I knew what I wanted, but I figured, well, gosh, I'm gonna be looking for a few months before I you know, find the right one. And I, I kid you not, it was less than 24 hours later that I had, I had done everything I just said that we found what ultimately ended up being the airplane that I bought. And so Bob found this and he said, hey, this thing just came on the market. If you don't buy it, I will, uh, because it's, it's, a, it's just a really great airplane. It's a great price for, for what you're getting. So I started to look at it and that was, uh, that was Sunday night. And then, was it Sunday night? Yeah, it was Sunday night. So Sunday, we're in Texas, the airplane is out in Florida, and so I can't just hop on a Southwest flight the next morning and go to Florida. So we reach a verbal agreement with, with them, with the seller, uh, on Tuesday to say, yeah, don't sell the airplane, we're really interested, we've got a plane ticket, we're coming out there on Friday. And so during the week, we're doing some diligence on the logbooks because they uploaded them digitally and things. But Friday morning, we fly out to Orlando and drive down to Vero Beach and do the pre-buy inspection on the airplane. We go fly it and uh, you know we're kind of going back and forth to the seller on, on a few things. And this is all feeling very fast to me. I'm like, I'm about to commit a lot of money to this thing. I want to do it, but I'm nervous. So like every, everything looked good, but we said, okay, uh, can we just, can we go to lunch? We hadn't eaten lunch all day. It was like three o'clock or something. And we said, can we just go to lunch and we'll come back and then, you know, uh, you know, tell you if we're in or out. So we go to lunch and I knew that I wanted to buy it, but I just needed, it was, it was Bob and my dad and me. And I said, I just, I just need you guys to help affirm that I'm not doing something stupid here. And they all felt great about the airplane. I felt great about the airplane. It was just nerve wracking to handshake on that much money. And so go back to the airport shake his hand and before you know it we're trying we're calling the bank trying to hit the wire cut off and I wire the seller $93,000 of hard earned money and I've been saving like crazy to try to buy an airplane and before you know it the airplane's mine so we go to dinner and I'm just mentally and emotionally exhausted having gone through all of this, super thankful. But then the next morning we got to fly home all the way back to Texas. And so I, I do, I remember especially um, calling the FBO the next morning and ensuring that they had put the airplane out on the ramp. And so I was calling and say, hey, yeah, uh, this is you know Charlie Gasmeyer for 916 Delta Foxtrot. And I remember feeling like such a poser because I'm like, I don't own an airplane. Like who, what am I, what am I saying? Like, oh yeah, that's, that's mine. And I you know paid the fuel bill and I was like, Oh yeah, I guess this is all on me now, and that was just kind of an interesting experience. But fast forward, the, the the thing that came really full circle for me is that I, I was hangering in the hill country there for a while, and I ended up finding a hangar, and it wasn't just any hangar, but it was a hangar at Addison Airport in Dallas, Texas. And so when I got to move the uh, airplane back into Addison, I will never forget the first time I took off my own airplane at Addison Airport where you know a number of years ago I had been on the outside of the fence looking in just wondering what would it even be like to have a key to an airplane to go sit in an airplane and so I spent a long time in the run up just just in quiet thankfulness of getting to be in that moment and so many years ago just wanting so badly to even know what that was like and here I am now owning the airplane outright and uh, about to go fly and put it in my hangar at Addison Airport and I don't mean any of that to um, give myself praise or be pretentious about it. It's more just a deep level of thankfulness. And so flying has really, really changed my life. I've been able to, you know, go explore the mountains of Idaho and, and see uh, different parts of the country really, you know, kind of whenever you want. And, and that's been just a tremendous sense of freedom. And those spectacular moments have, have been have been awesome. But I would say maybe even equally awesome have been the unspect unspectacular moments where I'm just flying over the flat terrain of Texas just being deeply thankful that I get to live in a time and a place um, in human history and, and even now in life, like I get to live in a time and even do this, do this at all in my own airplane. And, and, and I want to share those with others. And so it's just been 
one of the most impactful experiences of my entire life and I wanna help give that to others. So I started this channel and I started my website in hopes to help other people pursue aviation. But I, but I just came out with a new initiative where I wanna take things a step further and I actually wanna help underwrite some flying experiences for, for some people that I think if I can just be the first domino to fall in their life and help uh, motivate them and maybe enable them to pursue aviation that they're, they're gonna be hooked and they're gonna to wanna to pursue it and have their life changed in the same way that I just described in this video. So there's a really cool new opportunity and I explain it in this video right here. I want you to go watch it. It's a really cool opportunity.